my fellow techies, I'm Christina here at KitGuru to bring you the wireless lightweight mouse by Asus, the ROG Keras Wireless. Coming in at $89.99 at the time of this video, and you must have heard this before, which makes me ask, why are some of you not subscribed yet? Hit that subscribe button, it really means the world to us and it supports us for free. So diving into the box, we can see the usual cardboard packaging and the usual paraphernalia and some stickers. But what I love is the fact that you get spare glide pad switches and swappable side buttons. These side buttons are gray and pink to replace the black. Also, we have the two meter detachable ROG paracord cable that is like a shoelace cable, basically. It's nice and light too. It is pretty easy to kink, however, if you bend it, but equally easy to get rid of those kinks too. At one end of the cable, is a USB-A and the other is a USB-C. This is a great plus as some mice do still go for that micro USB which is kind of out of date tech now so a great plus to see a USB-C here. The battery is 500 milliamp hours and when charging Acer say you are looking at around 83 minutes for a full charge and that's with full lighting effects still going. As the Keris supports fast charging Asus reckons you get up to 12.6 hours of gameplay from just 15 minutes of charging time. Asus also say for battery life we're looking at around 78 hours without RGB and 56 hours with RGB when using the 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection but for battery life on Bluetooth it will be about 110 without RGB and 65 with them on. The lighting also shows you your charge level. The LEDs on ROG Keras Wireless will turn red, breathing when the battery is below 25% in RF, 2.4 gigahertz mode, and then 25% to 75% charge will be blue. 75% and above will be green. The mouse itself looks sleek with an asymmetrical design and drastic drop off around the left and right mouse click. And this slopes to the right hand side to accommodate right hand users. It's clearly not intended for a left hand as you can see by the side button placement. The hump is also asymmetrical and I would say a pretty usual medium height of around 39 millimeters. And we can see that lovely RGB logo which lights up really well against the black shell. This is definitely one for small to medium hands though as it measures 118 by 62 by 39 millimeters, which for reference is pretty similar overall sizing to the Zowie EC2B. The body features different surfaces. The shell is kind of in three parts. The hump and the sides feature a smooth satin, quite grease prone plastic. The top sides are stippled effect plastic and the left and right click look the same as the top sides, but they feel completely different. This is due to the use of PBT plastic. This gives it a non-slip surface and this helps with grip but also stops it from going shiny over time which is obviously great. You have a small gloss detail in the mouse wheel inlay and before we move on to the underneath I would like to mention the scroll wheel is a really nice design with the lines following the ergonomics of the slope too. I love attention to detail and it's nice that the whole wheel lights up too. Okay so underneath we have almost triangular glide pads of which you get spares of in the pack and a round glide pad around the PAW3335 sensor of which you unfortunately don't get a spare of but but these glide pads are so nice and smooth. Compared to my Razer Basilisk for instance, this one feels like a cloud. It's so fast and smooth. This is probably helped by the fact that the mouse itself is only 79 grams, which is pretty darn light. And talking of sensor, there is a thousand hertz polling rate, 16,000 DPI and 400 inches per second tracking. This mouse isn't playing around. And before we move on, I did do a lift off distance test by placing discs at both ends of the mouse leaving the sensor exposed to the underneath mat and on a low lift off distance the mouse stopped reading at around two discs high. On high disc height I was barely reading at two discs height so that indicates to me that there is very slight difference between these settings and overall the lift off distance is pretty low. I changed the lift off distance in the software but we'll look at the software properly later. Thank you. 
This is good for quick long arm movements on a low DPI and this is of course great for FPS games but if you change your glide pads you may need to make sure that they are on properly because if not this could of course cause issues. There are four onboard default stages of DPI 400, 800, 1600 and 3200 which you can change on the fly with the DPI button underneath the mouse and they are tied to a specific colour. Of course you can customise the sensitivity in the software which again we'll go through in more depth later. A nifty feature is the DPI on the scroll function. This allows you to customise the DPI without using the software at all. Press and hold the DPI button for 3 seconds until the LEDs light up and then scroll the scroll wheel forwards or backwards to adjust your DPI. The DPI increments are set at 100 DPI per scroll forward and backwards. The LED colour hue on your scroll wheel will differ depending on the DPI adjustment. You can also put the mouse on the surface Surface to move and feel that DPI change and scroll to adjust the DPI at the same time. Once you're happy with your DPI, press the DPI button once again to save the changes you've made. Now, although this is pretty cool and the mouse wheel does have prominent increments so you can be precise, to be honest, I would probably prefer to do this in the software as I can kind of see what I'm doing and I don't know, maybe I'm a bit old fashioned, I guess. I found it a little bit fiddly at times. Whilst we're talking shortcuts, you can change the two onboard lighting profiles by by pressing the DPI button and the left click and the side buttons in different orders. For instance, DPI button and up on the side button is breathing, DPI button and down on the side buttons is color cycle, and finally, DPI button and the left click is reactive. Now, that isn't that complicated. I know it might seem it, but it's quite a nice feature. But again, for me personally, I am a set it and forget it kind of person, so this isn't like a major plus for me, but it might be for you. Also, underneath the DPI button, we have the pair buttons on the left and a button that is for the 2.4 gigahertz wireless wired and Bluetooth LE connections. If you have a bit of a Hawkeye, you would have also noticed that there is an odd cutaway in the bottom of the mouse. This is where the USB dongle lives. It is so nice and neatly tucked away in there. It's just so convenient. No chance of losing it either as it's really, really snug. Now let's have a quick look at the Asus Armoury crate and what it has to offer. So make sure you have the most up-to-date version of the software then you will see that you can change all the buttons here to whatever function you wish and if you click the underneath section you can do the same for the side buttons too. Next we have the performance tab where you can see your DPI in real time here and you can see it changing. There are four onboard profiles to play with and you have your polling rate, response and angle snapping options too. Next is the lighting here, you can play around with default profiles or go into Aura to get more technical and personalised options. And on the next page is the lift off distance I mentioned earlier. And finally, don't forget to frequently check for updates here at the end page. Now in terms of use, Asus state that this mouse is made for claw grip and fingertip grip. I would say all grips are super comfortable. The asymmetrical shape of the hump provides so much support and it really is like it moulds your hand. The side texture plastic is nice and grippy and the other bonus I can reach the side buttons yay let's all celebrate <laughs> because this is something that I don't normally get to do and even though I use fingertip grip and my hand is a little further back than say claw grip it's still so much easier than other mice that I have tried including my own Razer Basilisk. I always find that I have to readjust my grip massively to even be able to reach them usually but here it's such a slight movement and even without moving at all I could still reach them. The left and right click feel great, there isn't any pre-travel that I can see and a very little amount of post-travel. Acer say they've gone with the pivoted button mechanism utilising springs and hinges to balance the keys and supposedly this minimises the gap between the buttons and the switches. If we open this up we can get a better look at those switches and the experience of opening up was pretty easy to be honest. Because of the shell design for some reason I wasn't really expecting the entire shell to come off but it does make it easier to get the thing off for sure. I also found it not too bad to put back together but there is a knack to getting it lined up properly so that the clicks engage or else they just kind of don't work. So switches pre-installed are the ROG micro switches with 70 million click lifespan and a gold-plated electro junction. The spare switches are D2F01 
Omron F Japanese made Omron switches and I personally feel that the ROG switches are both clicky and there isn't much difference between the two really but I think you get a little more post travel with the Japanese made Omron switches and the ROGs are a little clickier I would even say maybe slightly heavier. Having swappable switches is fantastic as it means you can really make this mouse what you want it to be. The ROG Keras wireless is compatible with Omron D2F and D2FC series switches so you don't have to just use the included spares if you don't want to. Here is a sound test with the ROGs then the Japanese made Omrons. I thought I would do a little comparison section to the Extra Fi M4 RGB mouse and the Aerox 3 Wireless by Steel Series for spec, performance, as well as ergonomic shape, comfort, and build quality, as I thought these were kind of fair comparisons for you all. Compared to the Extra Fi M4 mouse, the body of the ROG Keras is more linear and doesn't flare out outwards as much, other than at the back of the mouse, of course. Comfort wise, I prefer the ROG Keras hands down, it fits my hand nicely, and the asymmetrical and ergonomic shape feels so much better under the palm. Build quality, they are both really rigid and there is no flex at all when pressed on the top or squeezed. The Extra Fi is far more satisfying with its much snappier Omron switches and this also goes for the side buttons. These are much more clicky on the Extra Fi too. The next gen Golden Micro IP54 switches are also more clickier than those on the Keras but unfortunately there is some flex when pressing down on the top of the Aerox. Anyway, here is the sound test. Now in terms of performance, all of these mice have no jitter and are really responsive, but I thought I would compare their liftoff distance as mentioned earlier, and I lost reading with the Keras PAW3335 sensor at two disc height, and even on high disc height liftoff distance, I was barely reading at that two disc height. The ExtraFi has a 3389 optical sensor and wasn't reading on one disc height, and the Aerox wireless wasn't even reading with one disc height, and that just goes to show that actually the Keras has a slightly higher liftoff distance than these other guys. Now, enough about specs. How did it play in game? Well, I whipped out Call of Duty as always, and I instantly felt that this mouse was comfortable and it played really well. It was nice being able to reach those side buttons too without a huge shift in my grip, which shows that this is clearly a mouse for those with smaller hands. The 79 grams weight is also appreciated here. There are some lighter wireless mice on the market, but there aren't as many lightweight ergonomic designs. Also, there was no accidental mice movements due to that low DPI we spoke about earlier. In conclusion, at £90, the ROG Keras certainly isn't cheap, but if you want a lightweight, wireless, ergonomic mouse, it's definitely worth buying. Wireless performance was great, the shape is excellent for those with medium to small hands, and we love the hot swappable switches. Stuff that could be improved, well, I would say maybe another type of material that is a little less grease magnet-ish, but that's just my opinion. Let us know down in the comments what you think about this lightweight mouse and if you'd be interested in using it as your daily driver or maybe just as your gaming mouse. Don't forget whilst you're down there leave me a comment to check out our merch as I'm sure you won't be disappointed and there are some stuff on there that will make the kit guru in your life super happy. Also don't forget that our website is updated daily with daily tech news. I'm Christina, this is Kit Guru and I'll see you next time.